everybody, it's Brian here. I'm Tim. And we're getting ready to try Jaffa Cake. Now we don't know where it's from. Uh, there is some text on the back, but it's it's very hard to read. It's certainly in a different language, one foreign to me, mm -hmm. at least. Um, what these are, they are in the shapes of cookies. Mm -hmm. And according to the packaging, they are light sponge cakes uh, with orange flavored filling. And uh, definitely thumbs up on the packaging. I mean, this thing is orange. It's, mm -hmm. it's radiant, practically glowing. And uh, you see on the front there, uh, picture of the fruit glistening. Um, it's definitely doing a good job of uh, tinting the taste buds, especially Indeed. for those with a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. You ready to open these up? Let's do it. Well, I'll say this is not what I was expecting them to look like. The, yeah, uh, they're very UFO-like flying saucers. I feel like you know we could use these as props and we could recreate like an old 1950s sci-fi film. Anyhow, the uh, the cover only showed this side of it. it I was not right. expecting the uh, the uncovered side here. Oh well, it smells interesting. Yeah, kind of like a dark chocolate. Yeah, Let's yeah. taste. I think this is pretty cool. I gotta <laughs> say, um, I'm gonna bring this in close for you, cameraman, and those watching at home. There's like an orange jelly here. And it's it's very nice texturally, and the cookies are fresh. Um, the chocolate on top isn't overpowering or, or stale or stiff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna have another bite. Yeah, unlike uh, a lot of cookies, you get where they're all dried out and everything. This is actually fairly soft going here. I'm not gonna say it's like homemade soft, but you know. I mean, I'm like anybody else. I enjoy sweet from time to time, although. I'm not, you know, I, I don't run for the candy store or for the ice cream uh, uh, vendor mm -hmm. or parlor. Um, but I gotta say, these are, are sweets that I would actually not mind having around my apartment. I mean, mm -hmm. I could certainly see snacking on these while watching, you know, an episode of mm -hmm. TV series. They're fun to snack on. Mm -hmm. uh, texturally, they're light, they're fluffy. The jelly's a nice mix. Yeah. I mean, how many other foods can you think of outside of jelly itself? Um, where the, you closest, get that texture. the closest comparison I can come up with is a Fig Newton and that's not quite right because this is a little more liquidy. I think, right, in, not in so texture. grainy. And mm -hmm. I like these. Yeah. Um, we really don't know where they're from so we can't tell you a lot about them so good luck finding them. Yeah, some of our international viewers, if you'd like to clue us in, uh, feel free. You know. I mean, really all we have to go on again is, is the name Jaffa Cake. Or is so, it Jaffa? Um, I don't know. It, right, the pronunciation is lost on us. Mm -hmm. But um, letter grade, what would you say? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm feeling B's today, so I'm gonna go B level. You know, I'm actually gonna supersede that uh, mm -hmm. by moving it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna give this an A minus. Like mm -hmm. I said, I'm not a real big. I don't eat Oreos a lot. I don't eat, you know, Fig Newtons mm -hmm. as you mentioned, uh, or some of the other ones, Chips Ahoy, etc. You know, I don't eat a lot of cookies. I don't do a lot of snacking. Mm -hmm. But I like this. So yeah. A minus Jaffa cake. You're mysterious. You're wonderful. And we're getting ready to take a look at some hot teas, steaming hot. Now these just aren't any teas, uh, they are of the holiday variety. Indeed. I personally have got Nutcracker Sweet, and I'm rocking Sugar Plum Spice. Let's make some tea. Sounds good. You should never ever microwave water by itself, like I'm doing. Could I get a spoon? That's the first thing I saw. I see. Well, that in the July issue of Playboy. Really? Who's in that one? Any divas? Nah, it's probably not till Christmas. As you can see, the water is no longer clear. It's kind of becoming that, you know, tea colored. That tea colored tea. 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 Well, up first is Nutcracker Sweet. And I've had my nuts crack before, and it certainly wasn't sweet. No. Let's uh, sip. Hmm. Tastes kind of like generic tea to me. <laughs> it's faintly aromatic. I. It's hard to distinguish. You know, I definitely have kind of visions of the holiday, very very festive. But is that actually the flavor itself speaking on my palate, or is that just the marketing blitz behind the name and the packaging? I'm not certain. 
on the side of the box, they do describe how they uh, intended the flavor to taste. Mm -hmm. I'll read an excerpt. <clears throat> That's a, it's, well, they say it's a perfect for after dinner or as a stocking stuffer. Mm -hmm. That's debatable. But they say that they added vanilla and nutty flavors and a dash of cinnamon. Are uh -huh. you picking up any of these? Um, I am smelling them more than I am tasting them. I'm really not picking them up taste-wise. I can maybe get kind of that ground cinnamon, um, like a cinnamon stick. Um, it's pretty concentrated. Uh, then again, we made it in like two minutes, so we didn't take the most uh, time and care mm -hmm. with this particular brew. But um, let's give the other one uh, a shot, and then we'll compare and contrast. Sounds good. All right, now it's time to try the sugar plum spice. Indeed. I have visions of sugar plums dancing in my head. How about you? Have you ever heard of the Spice Network? Oh, uh, it's a story for another time. Um, well, he likes porn, can't you tell? Sorry, cat, you've got to go. Because tea, wow, that is hot. Whew. This one, um, when I smelt it previously uh, to, to actually making it, it smelled almost woodsy, almost too kind of pungent, but after he put it in with the hot water, it opened up the aroma and it had a great cinnamon smell. Mm -hmm. So this one might be uh, kind of nice. That's a different taste, I'll say that for it. Yeah, I mean it, it almost has, well it looks more orangish mm -hmm. underneath our studio lights, but to me it has a red flavor. Mm -hmm. Be it the cinnamon, almost kind of like a cherry or a fruity. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice. Um, again, let me uh, look at the box here and, and see if they will give us any hints as to what they were trying to achieve as far as flavor. Um, natural herbs, the festive flavors of plum and spice, mm -hmm. and just a hint of sweetness, it says. So I was wrong with thinking cherry or apple, it's plum, mm -hmm. but you can definitely taste the fruit in the spice. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of spice here. Well, We'll be right back with our conclusions. Sounds good. All right, in conclusion, we tried two uh, Celestial Seasonings holiday teas, and uh, both I found to be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you drink a lot more hot tea than me, and mm -hmm. then even most, actually, in general. Yeah, I like Pal Cold. I have to drink Pal Darko a lot. It does uh, wonders for my allergies, so, yeah. I wake up with a headache a lot. Anyhow, uh, of the two, I I'm definitely going to have to say the sugar plum spice was uh, my favorite of the two. Uh, the first one, um, I mean, it smelled good, but I just wasn't getting a lot of flavor. I mean, it just, to me, it tasted like a generic tea. I mean, it tasted almost identical to the Pal Darko I drank every every morning. So, And this had a very, uh, very uh, unique uh, odor and just very unique taste. So, yeah. I'm also preferential to that one. Mm -hmm. um, like them both, as I said, but mm -hmm. this one is definitely, you know, if you're going to have to choose one or the other, I think more bang for your buck here. The aromatic, the cinnamon, uh, the plum, it all kind of, you know, plays nicely. And, uh, yeah, I could definitely see this. And we are in Ohio, and the winters are quite cold mm -hmm. uh, and pretty vicious with the snow and the sleet and the ice. This would be a, a drink that I would wholeheartedly recommend drinking on a winter night when you're shut in. Um, letter grades, um... This one, I liked it a lot. I'm sure if I have tried more teas out there, I'd find some that I would prefer. Mm -hmm. But on its own, standalone merit, I'm going to give this one a B+. Plus. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go straight B. Okay. So. And uh, quickly on oh, Nutcracker Sweet, uh, what would you rank it? I'm going to say either B- minus or C+. Plus. It was about okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it at about a C plus too. It didn't stand out as much, but it's certainly not bad. Mm -hmm. And on the bright side, we got these over at Big Lots. It was $2 for one of these, and there's 20 tea bags in here. So Yeah, that's a really good value. I mean, technically, we used one tea bag to make one cup, but you could make like a whole pitcher or whatever out of this. So if you're into being economic, uh, you could go a little ways on this. Thanks for watching.